Good morning comrades! Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to our beloved sunny Nürburgring where we have a new lap record holder for the fastest front wheel driven car on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, namely the Honda Civic Type R 2023 model. And when they announced the lap time, the feed, and also published the video, I thought, okay, as usually, I'm going to make a nice video for you where I do a lap time analysis, telling you about amazing, impressive corner speeds, etc. And then the more I started looking into it, and the more people started to reach out to me about things that they were finding, the more fishy and smelly it became. So, I have actually a very high suspicions that Honda cheated. And before I'm gonna tell you everything about it, first a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video. Wouldn't have one. But actually, if you're actually watching for the first time on my channel, we're giving away this Toyota GR86. My car, once it is going to be completed, all you need to do is register on gapped.online and uh, follow the instructions that you receive in the email. And that's it, for free, no strings attached, except for a couple of shout outs maybe about our upcoming app. Okay, that's about it. Oh no, one important thing, before you all gonna grab your pitchforks and torches and yell Honda is a cheater, after my almost decade long experience at the Nürburgring, I can tell you that majority of manufacturers, not all of them, do these kinds of cheats. Small things, like we're gonna discuss later on, and big ones when they just like show up with a GT3 car and say like, hey, that's a production spec car, it's okay. And because of that, so after the last two years, Nürburgring actually started inviting TÜV engineers, where engineers come and check the car and say like, well, this looks like a normal car, normal tires, normal everything, you're good to go. Or say like, bro, that's way too far-fetched. And the cheats that we're going to discuss in today's video are actually something that you cannot see from the outside. You can be, maybe not even see them on the inside or unless you're gonna open up the thing. So anyway, fast forward, what are we gonna talk about? We have high suspicions that the gearing was not stock and the car was running high boost. How come? Well, first of all, as mentioned, more people reached out to me and one of the first one was a guy on Instagram called Midship Crisis. Nice name and say, I decided to reach out to you because of the FL5 Civic Type R, Type R lap by Honda. I don't know if you're going to do analysis on the lap, but if you do, I think Honda is cheating a bit. I noticed that the car that did the lap had a much shorter sixth gear compared to the production car. On the beginning, okay, this weekend we have the qualifying race for 24 hours happening. That's why all kinds of marshals are right now arriving to uh, set up their posts. It's very important. On the beginning of the main straight, the Honda driver shifts to sixth and revs are much higher compared to the production car. Now, we have seen already a number of lap uh, laps uploaded on YouTube by uh, YouTube channels such as Largus, very impressive lap, and also private people who've been here on track days recently. And what we see is that uh, they only hit sixth gear once when they approach Fadenkreuz. And once they go from fifth to sixth, the rev lights actually takes quite a long time to light up because the the six is functioning more or less like an overdrive. So it goes instead of like, wah, 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 it goes like, wah, wah. oh no, it should be actually a Honda because like, you know, case port, wah, because that's a fake speaker sound you get from the type R. You also see the same thing happening from the um, cars that have been tested, for example, on the uh, Autobahn to do the top speed runs. The same go, you go from fifth to sixth, it takes forever to eliminate the ref uh, light. However, on the lap record car, when it goes from fifth to sixth, uh, you see immediately already that pretty much both, well, two of the shift lights appearing, which is actually quite, uh, quite interesting. Moreover, unlike the other drivers, the Honda driver, the Honda car is using sixth gear four times. Well, Schwedenkreuz, downhill to Faxel, most importantly, the Kesselschen climb, which is not being used by anyone, and that's a pretty much a straight and uphill straight. And then finally, of course, also the main straight where we're standing right now, which is not being used during the public sessions, uh, can be only used on track days. And this is significant because this indicates that it has a different gearing. We can, of course, of course also argue that the gear, uh, the shift light has been set up differently. Wouldn't make sense to me. Shorter gearing would indicate that the car will accelerate faster to the certain amount of top speed that they want to achieve on these high speed sections that we're talking about. And we're talking about six kilometers of top speed sections here, like Schwedenkreuz, the main straight, and also Kesselschen, which will um, 
influence the lap time significantly. Now, you can of course also argue saying like, yeah, but the other drivers are not fast enough. That's why they are not using the sixth gear. No, we're talking here about straights and about, it's simply the only thing that's required you to do is actually just press your accelerator and go for it. That's it. So that is one thing that makes me frown. And the second thing is the car running high boost. And it's something that Alistair, who uh, we went out with in his Type R, um, mentioned. He told me, after looking back at all our track videos with the FL5 that he drove, the highest boost we've ever seen on the dashboard in our standard cars and log R is 23.8 PSI, with the briefest flicker to 24 PSI. That, that is actually correct because the factory specification of a Type R is, I think, 23.3 PSI. So. Uh, like some peaks because of altitude difference etc of uh, 0.5 bar or 0.5 psi is actually quite quite normal this was at donington in uk we didn't see the level of boost lapping at the ring again because of high elevations here that figure is more of an exception though as we've only seen that once and most of the time on our track boost normally peaks somewhere between 18 to 21 psi depending on conditions engine speed etc Coming up to back straight at as Kesselshin, my car was maxing out at around 20.7 PSI, which is 1.42, not sure if you can see it, okay, 1.42, uh, which is again also similar to what we have seen on the Largus uh, lap time or lap video because it was in TF, you're not allowed to lap time and they weren't even timing. You'll be also able to compare the Largus lap for reference. For what I could make out, it looked like Honda's record car was sitting comfortably for prolonged periods at 1.7 to 1.75 bar with the briefest of flickers to 1.83 bar just after the driver changes into fifth, which is important. That is around 26.5 psi so basically the car was running according to the video 0.3 bar of boost pressure higher than a production spec cars owned by well alistair or driven by largus as a press car which significantly a lot and this is also something that we've seen mostly peak in the fifth and the sixth gear now why is that it's because probably the car was set up uh in boost by gear this means that in the first second third and fourth gears the boost is relatively similar a not to provide too much power and torque and induce wheel spin on front wheel driven car which would be crucial and also not to make it too obvious that the car is more powerful than these cars and offer extra boost only in the fifth and the sixth gear combined with a shorter gear ratio to offer more acceleration on these higher on the longer straights and make it also less apparent than uh, to, the, to the audience the people that are watching it uh, than it would be on the well a shorter burst of, uh, of power and therefore again on the six kilometer combined outputs of these long sections combined this will give you quite some gain quite some time gain and at the end of the day they were out there to beat uh, Megan's lap time so when we look at the current Record times of the Nordschleife, according to the Nürburgring. Nürburgring only differentiates with compact cars, mid-range cars, executive cars. They didn't care about front-wheel driven cars. So Type R doesn't even have the lap record for a compact car, but it does have the record for the front-wheel driven car because the RS3 is the record holder, but has one more cylinder and also all-wheel drive, of course. Now, the difference in time between the RS Trophy R is half a second. And we can, of course, conclude because of that. First of all, impressive feature because the the trophy R with carbon fiber wheels cost probably double the price than the type R does but we can conclude that after seeing the car here last year also lapping and preparing they probably knew like hey we're not going to be able to make it we need to do something about it increase boost change the gear ratio something that will be not too apparent to tooth engineers and get that half a second I mean as Vin Diesel or Dominic Toretto said, it doesn't matter if you win by an by inch or a mile. That's, no, that's more of an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. No, you get what I get. Uh, you get what I understand. So, it's kind of, meh. Of course, I can be wrong. I'm not, uh, there could be 100,000 different reasons, but it's kind of very interesting to me that the center screen is blocked out by this overlay of G-forces, as if they intentionally hit something from us. So overall, it's still a very impressive feat. And 
at the end of the day, the question we need to ask ourselves now, um, also for the future, what I wanted to ask if that would be a regular analysis video, who are they fighting against? Renault RS division died. There's not going to be another Megane RS. There's not going to be another lap record. Volkswagen Motorsports died. Golf 8, there's going to be facelift soon, but it's about to die. I don't think they're going to care about putting another lap record with a front-wheel driven car with a club sport or something. Focus RS or Fiesta ST, Focus ST, whoever, dead. What else we're having left? Hyundai i30N, not enough power. And that's kind of it when it comes to hot hatches. Hot hatch segment is dead. This is the last car. So they could have better actually made a more special version and then went for it. And speaking of which, the final thing before people are gonna say like, yeah, but that is a special version, Misha. You should know that because according to the press release, which we have over here, official Honda website, let's look at it together. The lap time was set. I'm gonna read it because the mic is forward. Uh, the lap time was set using a Type R that is a lighter version of the latest model. This model will be available to order in European left-hand drive markets only and will be referred to as Type R S grade. The lap time was set during or using Michelin Pilot Sport Cup to connect tires that will be available to order through Michelin directly. So, no word about different gear ratios, no word about higher boost, only lighter. How much lighter does the car need to be to be this faster accelerating through fifth and sixth? So, yeah, that's all I had to say. At the end of the day, I also would like to hear your thoughts on it and dive deep into the lap video and compare it to other lap videos whether it is uh, similar uh, or it is what you similar to what i'm saying and uh, let me know your thoughts and i guess the only thing left to, to see here uh, if honda for example is going to say yes but it's indeed like this new version has to do something with the different gearing or uh, different this new version is going to come with a different gearing we'll just have to use the new type s that is or whatever they they call this model i'm sorry for that uh, for uh, forgetting it already we'll need to use it production spec car and see what the car is going to do ourselves in terms of the boost values and uh, how it goes from fourth to fifth to sixth that's it that's all i had to say so uh wishing you a great weekend we're having a qualifiers weekend here of 24 hour race and we'll be making some cool content for you guys so subscribe like and share if you haven't yet and see you at the networking bye